This is Ben from Testive, and we're looking at an SAT reading question. This is an inference question. So uh, the question stem, it can reasonably be inferred, uh, oh, there's a typo, it can reasonably be inferred from the passage that Martin Luther King Jr. believed. Okay, uh, that's not a lot of information to go on. Uh, doesn't give us a line, doesn't give us a paragraph. Uh, all it asks us to do is decide which of these answer choices are reasonable as an inference from the passage. And really, uh, it's actually asking us something even more specific than that, or even a little more challenging. It's asking us which of these is the, the most reasonable. Uh, they don't say that, but that's really what they mean. We're always looking for the best answer, not necessarily the only right answer. So the way that we're going to, um, but in this case, the way that we're going to answer this, uh, or any question like this, it's probably best to use elimination. If we can eliminate answers because they're not reasonable to infer, uh, then we can find the one that is the most reasonable to infer without having to go to a specific place, without having to go to a specific place. So let's see here. Um, logical clarity should be used in the fight to gain civil rights. Okay, well, there's a number of places in this passage that logical clarity is used, uh, or where Martin Luther King Jr. uses logic. Uh, so logic meaning sort of um, reasoning uh, and if-then statements and comparisons of, of um, patterns of reasoning, right? So we know that in this second paragraph, because we've already read it for other um, questions, uh, that He's comparing unjust laws and just laws uh, and explaining what makes an unjust law unjust. Uh, and then even going into more detail, it's unjust if, uh, if there are a particular set of conditions that are met. So that seems like logic to me. So I'm not going to rule this answer out yet. Religious beliefs are the most important foundation for fair legal codes. Well, we know that he was a religious man. We know that he starts this passage off uh, talking about religion. We know that it was written in response to clergymen from this beginning portion here. However, uh, we also know that after he talks about um, St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, he goes on to talk about um, the Supreme Court, he talks about just and unjust laws as, uh, by definition, uh, having to do with majority and minority groups. And he says this is a more concrete example. So we can't really be sure whether he thinks that everything has to go back to uh, religion as its foundation uh, because he provides uh, a logical foundation as well. So I'm going to rule this out because we actually have a better answer that we didn't have any evidence against. People's practical experiences are more important than scholarly theories. We can rule this out right away because he cites different scholars throughout the, um, throughout the passage. He talks about a philosopher here. He talks about, um, well, he talks about a philosopher. He even talks about Socrates, uh, who we could call sort of a scholar, uh, an early one. Uh, so we can probably rule out that there's no place where he really says, uh, we should discount what scholars say and just listen to the people. Making progress requires leaving behind the mistakes of history. This is another one we can rule out easily. Um, because at the very end of the passage, he talks about the history of civil disobedience. He talks about uh, the earliest civil disobedience ever, and he talks about the Boston Tea Party. Uh, so we can rule this answer out, leaving us with the first answer choice, that uh, we weren't really able to rule out and we did have a little bit of evidence for, that makes it the best answer.